Alright, so let's talk about arrays. Most people are familiar with arrays, but they don't actually know how they work on a deeper level. And that's something that you really need to understand, especially going into computer science background when you're going to be picking different structures on how you can run something very quickly. So arrays, let's talk about arrays. Well, the first thing that most people notice when they look at arrays are the fact that they have a fixed size. Now, typically this is seen as a massive disadvantage and inconvenience, but there's a reason they have that. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But essentially this fixed size means that when you create an array, you need to pick before even starting the problem or using the array, how big your array is going to be. Now, if you don't know this answer and you don't know how big it's going to be, how do you decide? Well, that's typically when you might use a different structure. But anyways, that's something to note that you have to pick how big it's going to be before you even, you know, create the array. Now, the next thing with this fixed size is that if you, you know, say you create an array that's size 10 and you now want to add an 11th item to it. Well, you can't do that because there's no more room in the array, so it can be filled up. And another thing with this fixed size is that say you create an array and maybe you're like, you know what? I don't know how big I want this array to be, but I'm going to make it size 10,000 so that it's just massive enough that I don't have to worry about it. Well, if you do that, that's another really big disadvantage because what you've actually essentially done here is you've put a little slot of memory here and I'm just drawing like mock computer memory and you've said, I'm going to make sure that I have 10,000 spaces for items in my computer memory, which means that you're actually locking up a ton of memory. And this is known as a memory leak um, by creating such a massive array that you're not actually going to use. So when you only have a few items in a really large array, that again is another disadvantage of an array because now you're using all of this space and memory that could have been used for something else. Now in modern day computing with people having 16, 32 gigabytes of RAM in their machine, it's not really a huge issue, but still something to think about when using an array. All right. So now we've talked about a few disadvantages of it. What's one of the advantages of an array? Well, one of the advantages is the fact that you can index items. Now, a lot of people take this for granted, but we know that we're using an array, we can use something called indexes and we can look up any item in our array by simply knowing where it is. And that position is being held in our computer memory because of this fixed size. Now, when we look up an item, this actually happens in what's known as constant time, which is very fast, as fast as you can do something in computing. So because we have this fixed size in our memory, let's say we have an array of size five. So one, two, three, four, five, five squares. And maybe these are items here like that. Now we know that the indexes go from zero all the way up. And if I want to look up any item, all I have to know is where it is. So like index three, and I can grab that immediately as opposed to using something like a list that takes a lot longer to do that. So that's something to remember that indexing items and getting any random item takes Oh one constant time. Now, what about inserting, deleting and removing items? Well, let's look at how that works because it's not quite as fast. Now, because of this fixed size in our memory, if we want to insert an item, this is actually quite computationally heavy. Let's say we have this array and we want to insert, I don't know, the item five in between seven and nine. Well, to do this, we actually need to shift every single item in our array past this point over. And we might even have to remove the last element to make room for this new inserted array. So when we do that, it looks something like this. We have the box seven, which is index zero. We now squish in our new index five, sorry, new item five, which is index one. And now all of these indexes need to be incremented by one and shifted over. So nine needs to go where 10 is, 10 needs to go where 11 is, and 11 needs to go where 12 is, and 12 is well lost in emptiness. It's, it's gone forever, right? And that's what happens when we insert an item, at least into a full array. So that takes what's known as O N time which is a long amount of time in computing based on how big the list is or how big the array is. It's going to continually take longer and longer to insert an item, especially if that item is at the beginning of our list. So once we insert that item, uh, that was a horrible box. I'll redraw that one. We have nine, we have 10 and we have 11, but these are now moved to new indexes. So two, three, and four. Now let's look at the example of removing an item. And this is the exact same problem we've ran into before. Let's say we want to remove item 10. We want to just get rid of it. Well, to do that, we now need to shift all the items after item 10 down by one. So we can rewrite this entire array. 
but we need to now switch four to be index three and replace the value of item 10. So now we have an array that ends up looking like this, seven, five, nine, 11, and then an empty square that has no value in it. And what we've done here, we've said zero, one, two, three. This is still index four, but now we could call this null because we've just removed that last item from 11. So that is what happens when you're inserting and removing items. So quick recap here of everything I've kind of covered. Arrays have a fixed size. You need to decide how big you want your array to be before you start even creating it and working on the problem. If you make your array too big, then you're going to have a ton of room and memory that's just being wasted. And that's a memory leak. If you need to insert or remove items, that's going to take you O N time, which is a long time for at least this structure to remove and add items. And the only really advantage of using an array and when you should use it is if you're looking to randomly access items, because that happens in O one time, which is faster than almost any other time that we can find. Now, arrays do have their use, especially if you're just looking for, you know, like a small, quick thing to implement. But you should definitely consider using something like a linked list or a doubly linked list if you're going to be removing and adding items from the front and back of the array quite often. Even just inserting randomly is going to be faster in some of those other structures because of the way that they're set up. So just something to consider. I hope you guys now know how quickly arrays run and kind of how they work in the computer's memory. It's definitely an important thing to understand. So if you guys learned something, please make sure you hit a like and subscribe to the channel. And with that being said, I will see you guys in another video.